I was born in Cornwall, New York, actually Goshen, New York, and lived in Cornwall, which is down near New York City on the Hudson River. 1996, I came here to go to UB um, for painting. Um, I did abstract expressionist, I did impressionist, I did minimalist. Um, I went through a whole different phases, but um, ended up doing photorealist backs of trucks by the time I graduated. <laughs> well, the canvas was actually um, mimicked the back of the truck, and all the elements of the truck were um, created photorealistically. So the sides of the canvas looked like handles, and in the middle was the latch and the license plate, and the tires were at the bottom. So the entire field was made up of this truck. I think I had a lot of ideas coming different ways and I thought the answer to all my questions was the back of the truck. Um, I thought that it was um, beautiful in every element and I wanted to paint it. I was doing a lot of driving on the 90 and the 290 and um, I was weaving in and out of traffic and it was much like a dance and I, I started um, making the analogies between dance and um, driving and um, that's where the mark making also started coming into play. I started dancing when I was nine years old and um, I danced through high school and um, took a break and then picked it up in college and then probably took a break and then picked it up in grad school again and then um, now I'm 34 and from the time I was 31 to 33 I was dancing so it's intermittent. Um, honestly, I was about five years old. Well, I was going through coloring books like water, and I just remember coloring, 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 and then starting to draw. I drew, you know, um, anything from clowns to um, opera singers to anything in life I was drawing. Anything. I have a book that's filled with drawings from the time I was really young, and it's just... It's salt and pepper shakers, it's bananas, it's buses, it's, it's everything. Although when I was in elementary school, I was afraid of my art teacher, so much so that my mom had to leave work and come sit by me at cl in class. Mrs. Berry was just this old, decrepit woman, and she, would, she had a, a number over every table in the, in the room and you had to go up to her and she'd grab your shoulder and she'd say the number and she would grab it so tight and she'd push you towards the table <laughs> that you had to go to and she'd go, nine, three, <laughs> and it was just horrible. <laughs> and um, I was using the brush like a, a pencil or a pen more than a brush and so that's where I started then working in pen and ink. The last time I painted was in grad school, and I just painted my mark making, you know, and it was drippy, and there was layers, and it was, it was very ethereal, um, and it was, it really captured space. Um, they were nice. I don't know where they are now, but I did kind of abandon painting, because I think of my drawings as almost my paintings. Um, I think because of my space, my living space, I live in such a tight quarters, I don't know if I can paint in there too. And I, I don't like the idea of going to a studio, at, like a, another place to make art. I have to make art with, within my living space. Probably because I work on the floor, and I used to work on the bed, and I like to curl up and feel comfortable, and like, it, like with all my stuff, you know, and like that sanctuary, that garret kind of idea. And I don't, I don't like to have to travel to make art. So, this really shows um, where I started getting into the grid, and um, here's early work. I don't read it. It's <laughs> At the time, I was really lonely, and I was going through a really hard time, and I had to delve into something and so I delved into um, the theories of the grid and Taoism and um, Buddhism and a lot of modern art. 
So these are figure, figure drawings, which I also think are important. And these are little, um, you know, pieces of painting that I cut up. I started cutting up my paintings um, around this time and bundling them. Um, more figure drawing. Here's architecture collage that I did. Um, and you can see all through this I'm writing, 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 and it's like that obsessive writing. It's just free thought, mm -hmm. and um, I just like the look of it. I don't like exactly what I'm writing. <laughs> this is very, I think this is pretty important. This is a drawing I did around '99, and I think it says a lot as far as improvisation and um, the possibilities. What's what's possible. Well, it just goes whichever way it wants to. It, and as a maker, I just, I didn't really plan anything. I just kind of did it. And here's another example that's really important. Um, this is where I start getting into um, making, a, making, I don't know, just drawing. But there are little stories within the drawing. So it's not just a grid, it's... And just as the grid is a stereotype that is constantly being paradoxically rediscovered, it is as a further paradox, a prison in which the caged artist feels at liberty. For what is striking about the grid is that while it is most effective as a badge of freedom, it is exactly or extremely restrictive in the actual exercise of freedom. Rosalind Krauss. No, I'm not drawing grids. Um, I'm drawing a language. Well, it's it's my own fluid language. It's got components that make up a larger sentence. It's got um, little squares and little lines that fall off of it and circles and squares and I don't know it's hard to explain what I do here's another one that I did later on it's a lot cleaner and it's a lot um, but again it's the writing is more important as a drawing yeah I did things like this too Wears surreal grids. It's a, it's just a diary of life. It's nothing important or interesting. Maybe a little bit interesting, but. <laughs> um, I did it in 1999, and I did it around a time where I was um, starting to think about handwriting and. Um, not writing anything, but just a grid, and I did it in a sloppy way, I guess to mimic nature, um, to get the vitality of my hand. Drawing um, on tick ticker tape, ticker tape things, um, like register tape, and I was, I like that, I, I like the idea of it being endless, um, going up into this spiral. I left UB Image in New York for two oh. years. And then and I worked as a graphic designer in New York. Um, then 9-11 happened and I left. And I went to Buffalo and I was a graphic artist more there, art director for an ad agency. And then I went to uh, Chicago for graduate school. Well, I went to school for what's called print media. And it's basically printmaking and computer graphics together. And so I went there and I thought, well, if I go there, for print media, my dad will, you know, be supportive because I'll be a graphic artist. <laughs> and 
And when I was there, I was completely overwhelmed and lost for the first like semester. My first crit was terrible. Um, and then I started painting a little bit, and I had um, a really great teacher named Susanna Coffey, who's a painter. And um, she said, well, either you do trucks because you love them, or you do doodles, you know, because you love them. But you can't, you have to decide what you're doing. And, and I thought, that's interesting, because I was doing the trucks, but then I was doing the doodles over them. And I like the concept of the trucks, and I like the concept of like the monumentality of the trucks, and um, the colors of the trucks, and things like that, the elements of the trucks, but I didn't really love trucks. And so I started making paintings with my mark making, just abstract paintings, and then I started printmaking, where I started working with paper, and then I started drawing on the paper and on the prints that I was making. And then eventually I was just buying large sheets of paper and just drawing on them. Can you get the detail? I can get down there. Okay. Yeah, that's better. I feel more comfortable. And then I can go out here so you can really see what I do. basically the same thing over and over, just different proportions and um, different direction. And then I go in real tight and I, that's where the modularity happens. <laughs> um, I think about everything and nothing at the same time. <laughs> I just, just end where I end. I don't really think about it. Like here, I'll just end right there. And then I'll go in, I'll get real tight. And then I can go back out and get loose. I'll be connecting the, the lines. So I fill everything in. Until it's a box. Well, the, the larger form is a box. When I draw, it's like really fast. <laughs> well, <clears throat> it's interesting because when I was little, I was colic, and the only thing that could keep me from screaming my head off was um, a rocking swing that they put me in. And I never got sick of the rocking swing, and I think. It's the same thing now, is that I, I need that cathartic, um, rocking, rhythmic motion. So. Because I don't work in layers, so everything is linear and it's, it's spread out and it, it accumulates fast, faster than you think. <laughs> and so I need a big piece of paper to, to accommodate the, the amount of work that I do. Um, but it's, I don't really do this size any longer anymore. When I was making these large drawings, I was manic. So I was able to produce more. And I wasn't sleeping, and I wasn't, you know, I, I was manic. So now, I'm not manic, and <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> so now I do small work, and I'm happy with it. These are just more monumental, and they're just, they're, their presence is um, hard to ignore. Um, but, and they bring you in. They really suck you into the, the, um, the labor. They're, they're the size of a truck. <laughs> I want to take you by the collar and bring you up to my face and go like this. <laughs> you have to work for it a little bit, I guess. 
you gotta work up to it. And I definitely feel like I have I have um, something in common with you know the cartoonist because it's that same gesture over and over and over, and you know he, he he's drawing the same character over and over and over, and I think it's the same feeling. It's just smaller, larger, different perspective, but the same language and the same lines to, to make up something. Well, if you filled them in, then it, it, you'd have to fill them in with different colors so that they would stay different shapes. If I went and colored in this black, then it would just be black. If I colored it red, it would just be red. But I know what you're saying, why wouldn't I stop and color something in? And I'm not the one who should be coloring it in, maybe somebody else should be coloring it in. <laughs> I just don't think the effect would be the same. I think it would be too uh, chaotic and it would be muddy and, um, you know, the magician never gives away his secrets and I think that my secret is that I'm always just, you know, I hide my secret in the mon monotone, in the monotonous, monotone. Well, the secret, I guess, is the meshing of, of the, the lines and how I do it. and. And so that's the secret is is how I do it, how it's connected. If I brought it, if I introduced another pen, even like some people say, I should do a color and then another color next to it, and another color next to that. And I just I know that's just not going to be aesthetically pleasing. It's just going to be a mishmash of craziness. So I just nod and say thank you. <laughs> I'll think about it. <laughs> Um, I love that I can afford to be an artist in Buffalo. I love that there's so many people who care about culture and um, care about artists and, you know, buy art and people who are into art, go to art openings. Um, and that's about it. I am lucky to have a great city that I can afford to live in and still be successful in and, you know, feel like I'm making headway. I have. Um, a, a solo show at Nina Freudenheim's in May, and um, that's about it. That's a big deal, though. <laughs> it's a lot of work. Um, I don't see myself stopping anytime soon. I don't see myself starting to paint or sculpt or anything like that. I think um, I'm going to be doing this. I'm not done with this. Uh, I'm not nearly done with this. It's a lot about the process. It's more to do with the process, I'd say. But isn't the drawing the process? Is it? I think it is. I mean, I'm drawing and that's the process, is the drawing. <laughs> Although I did just um, sign up for figure drawing at the Birchfield Penny, just for fun, because I think I need to do something different in order to really appreciate what I do, you know, so I'm going to be doing that, which is exciting. Well, I think the drawing came from the writing. I think the writing was first, and I liked certain things, and I liked, you know, trucks and grids, and, and driving, and Taoism, and dancing, and there's all that stuff. And I wrote it out, and I wrote it out, and I figured it out, and I, as I was writing, I started realizing what I was doing. and. Um, then I started doodling. Yeah. Yes, one of my pieces is currently on display um, at the Albright Knox um, in the Decade Show. Um, there's a book. You want to see it? So, yeah. This is it. Vision modularity. Zoom in. <laughs> so, and what does that mean to you as an artist to be in the collection of the Albright Dogs? It means um, a lot. It means a whole hell of a lot. It's it's an honor. And um, I was so surprised when they bought a piece. I was really just like blown away and 
humbled. So I have a modular, it's all modularity. I mean the whole thing is modular. But the modularity comes from the lines. It's really a it's a result of the formation of line. And so I just I thought that was interesting. It's modular but it, as a result of something else. I'm not thinking I'm gonna make this modular this shape. I'm going to make this line this shape and this leather line is going to come up and yeah. So that's it. That's my thoughts. <laughs> I tend to have fun at the ends of these things. Like I, I, I start out real tight like this and then I go wee and I have fun. <laughs> And everything gets bigger and looser. I don't know. It's kind of like the end of a signature. You know, you just trail off. <laughs>